Uh, thank you everyone for coming to my presentation. My topic today is distributed workflow for microservice style application. So microservice architecture is adopted for breaking down the big software application into loose coupling service module. Um, it provides a lot of good things. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. So um, the microservice architecture provides a lot of good things such as uh, failure isolation, scalability, and it's um, easy for the, for the development. But it also introduced some new complexity. Um, suppose you're gonna implement your business logic on a microservice uh, design. So how how you gonna um, how you gonna uh, manage your message traveling across the mo uh, different modules, and uh, how you gonna coordinate your task execution on different services, and how you gonna handle your errors. So to make your life easier, I think a workflow pattern will give you the uh, capability to implement your business service logic over um, loose coupling service modules. So uh, before we start, I'm gonna uh, say something about myself. My name is Yuying Chen, and I, former, I, I was a former uh, network engineer, and now work as a so software engineer in Nevada, a company deliver the integrated solution on multi-cloud application management, as well as Kubernetes-based container management. Uh, also, Nevada is a Kubernetes certificate service provider. Okay, so my presentation is to introduce the distributed workflow pattern and its usage in microservice style application using Nevada OSS workflow library. So here's the outline. So first, I will uh, briefly introduce the, what is microservice and what is a, a workflow and what is the challenge about the workflow management on microservices. Then I will introduce you the Nevada OSS workflow and try to do the demo. And uh, we were, uh, also we will talk a little about other solutions. So what is microservice architecture? Basically, um, in microservice architecture, service model worked independent and isolated. In most cases, we deploy those service modules on different containers in Docker world. Um, and the different service modules will communicate each other through, uh, let's say, REST API. Then what is workflow? So workflow basically is a Co is the coordinate of a sequence of tasks. For, let's for, uh, take an example. Um, if you wanna do a shopping workflow, uh, so you first you're gonna place, place the order, and then you're gonna pay the order, and then you're gonna get your product shipped. So there are three tasks in this workflow, and each task are processed by different service module, and they are sequential. So we need a workflow to coordinate those task execution. And this is a monolithic uh, web application. So what about you, you wanna scale your application in a distributed environment? That means you have multiple service uh, you, you have multiple instance for your web application. Accordingly, you have multiple instance for your workflow. Then you will need a scheduling module to coordinate those workflow instance. Now we come to the microservices. As we mentioned before, microservices module are independent and isolated. So the challenges are how we're gonna, uh, how, uh, how we're gonna execute task asynchronized over the uh, distributed environment across multiple services. At the same time, we need to manage the task dependency, and also we need to handle the complex logic, such as uh, what if one of the task is failed and you wanna keep going your, the, your workflow, or if, the, if the one of the task failed, you wanna stop all the workflow kind of things. And uh, Nevada OSS workflow solve those problems. 
It is an open source library written in Java based on Apache Zookeeper, uh, which is a well-known, reliable, and uh, highly uh, available coordinator. And, and we also use the curator as the client, Zookeeper client. It is lightweight and easy to use. So here list some main features of the workflow library. It is capable of manage the task relationship. So the task relationship here mainly means the task dependency. And it could schedule task in the distributed environment. And the task type could be customized. Also, it gives a good support for fault tolerant. Um, for example, um, maybe, you, uh, maybe anything will go wrong during your task execution. Say you, your service is restarting, or your Zookeeper cluster changed state. Then the task execution will be resumed. There are some key components in the workflow library. First is the workflow manager. Uh, the workflow manager will register for a specific task type uh, when the service initialized. So the workflow manager is responsible to submit your task and give notification, um, say there's a, note, there's a new task node there. And uh, the scheduler will manage the task node during the task execution it will ensure that no, uh, um, the task node will, be, will not be executed twice, because it's, it's a distributed system, right? So, and for the task queue here, is a wrapper of Zookeeper node, where we put our task node in. And the task executor here is, uh, is just an executor thread you can have multiple task thread in, a, in your service. Uh, sorry, multiple task executor thread in your service. Uh, let's go deeper to take a look at the task execution module. So when the workflow manager submits a task, it will create a new task node in the, uh, in the task queue. This is task type specific. And um, the executor, as a consumer will listen to those task queue, if there's a new node come in, they will be notified, and then one of the task executor, say we have multiple task executor instance, right? So one of the executor thread will pick up the task and execute it. So the scheduler here will ensure that no other task executor pick up the same task here, and to, uh, to, uh, also, the scheduler here will make sure that if the task has a subtask, um, it will uh, extract the subtask and then execute that. So the whole executor model is decentralized. The workflow manager instance and the ta task executor could be on the ser same service, but it's not, not necessary and uh, it works well in the distributed system, and uh, the task could be, async uh, could be executed asynchronized. So here, the diagram uh, mainly show how we manage the task dependency. The task, uh, the task dependency is represented by a directed asynclic graph. So, the, those tasks has no dependency, like task one, task two, and task three can be executed concurrently. But for task four and task five, take example here, um, should be wait to the, to, the three, uh, to the one, two, three, finished executing, then it will get started. So this, so we can, we can handle the concurrent and the sequential task execution here. Uh, here I give some example code for how to build a workflow. Uh, you might need a workflow manager builder to build the workflow and pass by some uh, related parameters like uh, in which namespace. This namespace is, um, is mainly related to the Zookeeper namespace. So the namespace to where you want to put your task in and uh, so the 
auto cleaner here is to say that when the task be complete, uh, when the task execution uh, be completed, you wanna you wanna automatically clean up those task nodes from your task queue. So. Um, how many times you want to wait after the completion and uh, how often you want to run your auto cleaner, you could define it here. Also, um, here we can add in task executor. The task executor means, uh, means how many concurrent task executor thread you want for this task type. Yeah, so. And also here is an example code for how to write the executor. Take example here is I just, I just uh, get a logger uh, here to print that the task could be executing. So this is a one executor. When you're, adding the, when you're adding multiple executor, it will execute the task at the same time. Okay. Now I'm going, I'm going to show you some demo uh, to see how, work, how our workflow library works in our production. So this is a Nomada web applications. Uh, I'm going to create a new environment here Use a shop me blueprint. Okay, there's a lot of uh, it, uh, there's a lot of service here in the, in this application. So each service is a you can you can think it is a microservice. So why I want to demonstrate here is I want to show you how we manage the task dependency in our workflow. If you look into the blueprint, blueprint to see the shop me and go to see the service here, you can see the dependency. So for catalog, it has no dependence, and the customer also. But for deals, it dependent on catalog service and customer service, and the, the loyalty here is also is the similar things. So what I'm gonna do here is try to update the image of all those tasks, all those services. Uh, okay, let's say there's a there's a service fail here. <laughs> let's just uh, remove that. Yeah, this is how Nomada um, manage the microservice. So I'm gonna do uh, in the environment update to all the service here. I choose an uh, image. Sorry. I choose a new image for all those service. Let's say what happened. So underneath for each service, the, tag, uh, the image update is an is a independent task, but the whole workflow, including all the tasks here, it will take care of the dependency of the task. Uh, for what, ha what we have seen before, the catalog and the customers has no dependency. So those tasks will be executed first. And for the task like deals or um, I think his loyalty orders are dependent on the, on the task, on the previous task. So it will be executed later after, those ta after the previous task be completed. Yeah, you can see that um, for those tasks has no dependency, it is executing concurrently. And for those tasks has dependency, we'll wait for the previous task finished executed, then it starts executing.
okay? So yeah, this is, this is what we call a workflow. So basically it consists of uh, multiple tasks and uh, tasks over different microservices and uh, we just managed to do it here. Yeah, okay, so this is finished. Let's go back to the slides. Uh, what I just show is how we, sorry, uh, is how we use our workflow, use the Namata workflow library to manage the workflow in our productions. Um, of course, there's other great solutions in the industry, such as Netflix Conductor, which is a orchestrator, but also provides a feature that you can define your task execution using a JSON DSL. Um, others, like uh, AWS Simple Workflows, it's a cloud application, so you can use that in your, uh, in your, uh, in your cloud applications uh, across multiple machines. Um, these uh, both are great solutions and uh, great and inter integration solutions. It's just uh, we start with our Zookeeper and the Curator framework, and uh, we just want to write a library which is lightweighted and easy to use, easy to plug in. So we de develop our own. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much about it. So. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, so I just want to see if you guys have any questions about that. Yes? Uh, well, from our experience, a single task workflow always do. And for what I showed before, it's uh, like a wrapped tasks. Wrap task is a task chain. Like uh, you can do dozens of tasks in your workflow. But yes, I haven't tested. I mean, in our current production, we haven't faced the issues that we have hundreds of tasks there. So yeah, maybe I will. We will try later. But technically, I think it supports. Any other questions? Yes. How many companies are using uh, our production? You mean production or workflow library? Uh, There's two different things because our workflow library is an open source library. There's a GitHub uh, link on the slides, but our production is, yeah, it's a production, business production, yeah. I'm not so sure about that, <laughs> but I think if you're using, um, if you already use, because we use a uh, zookeeper and curator, sometimes it's, uh, to be honest, it's, uh, it's kind of difficult to monitor and troubleshooting them, but so if you already have your zookeeper cluster runs, maybe you can have a try. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, by the way, um, our company have a booth um, downstairs. So, if you guys have any interest or you want to know more about our workflow library or our production, you're very welcome to come to our booth. Okay, thank you.